Hello everyone, Dr. Hasbullah here and now let's take a look at an example about the force on a plane. Now let's say that this is the inside of a submarine. Okay, and this is a solid wall. But you have here a hinge and this is your surface. Okay, and this is the inside of the submarine. Okay, I'm gonna color it as grey. Okay, this is the inside of the submarine and this is the outside of the submarine. Now, when you have this kind of problem, you know that the force will be coming from outside to the inside of the submarine. So, if this is your centroid, then the force acts a little bit lower than the centroid which is at the center of pressure. This is your CP and your force will act from outside to inside and it is perpendicular to your surface. Now this is a hinge. Okay, so if you draw a free body diagram for a hinge you have Fy and Fx. And then the inclined angle here is 45 degrees. And also if this is a water level, okay, I may have exaggerated this drawing. So if this is water level, Right. So if that is water level, then the distance here is 10 meter. Okay, and I'm going to call this force F. And what I need to find now is the force that you need to apply in order to open this hatch. Okay, so I'm going to call that P. So now, objective is quite simple. So the question is fine P and we know that there are not many forces involved in this problem okay and when you have a hinge over there and if we draw a free body diagram okay and this is the hinge so we need to calculate the moment that is required so that P is just enough to open the hatch right so this is still F okay and Two most important things that we need to know is the magnitude of F and also the location of F because we need to find the distance here. And let's just call this YP and the distance between P here and the hinge is called L. Alright, now what is the dimension of the surface? So the dimension is 800 mm by 800 mm. Okay, so this is the dimension of the hatch. So immediately you know that L is equal to 0 0.8 meter. Okay, now the problem is to find F and to find YP. Now let's find F first. So F, let's take a look at our equations that we derived before. So F is simply P at centroid times area. Okay, so this is pressure at centroid times area. So area is simple, 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. But P at centroid is rho G H bar times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So rho G is 9810. And what is your H? Okay, let's take a look at what is H. So our H should be here. This is our H bar. Okay, and we know that this is already 10 meter. Okay, so H bar is actually equal to 10 meter plus this distance. Okay, and we know that the length is 0 0.8 meter. So alpha is 45 and let's just draw another triangle here. We know that the length is 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 divided by 2 is 0 0.4. Alpha is 45. So y, so to find y, 0 0.4 times sine 45 is equal to y, right? So plus 0 0.4 sine 45, okay? So that's your h bar. So this is equal to 10 plus 0 0.4 times sine 45 times 0 0.8 square. And this is equal to 9810, this is 0 0.4 sine 45. 
plus n times 0 0.8 square times 9810. That will be 64,560 newton. So about 64.56 kilonewton. So whenever you calculate something and you get the answer, now think a little. Does it make sense that the force could be this big? So 64,560 newton is about 6,000 kilogram. That's a lot of weight, isn't it? Now, does that make sense in this type of problem? Now, if you look again at the drawing, now you know that the door is actually 10 meters under the water. So 10 meters of water is a lot of water. So the pressure must be huge. So when the pressure is huge, the force will be huge as well. So that's how you know if your calculation makes sense or not. And this helps a lot in your exam whenever you are confused. So think about the physical meaning of the numbers that you found. If you think that is okay, the number makes sense, then most likely that your answer is correct. Now that you have found the force, how about the location? Okay, now is the time where I show you how to use second moment of area or I. Let's have a look at our equation involving yp. So yp is equal to y bar plus i over y bar a. Let's write this again. yp is equal to y bar plus i over y bar a. Okay, and I think we know a few things already. So a is 0 0.8 square and y bar, if you remember, is simply h bar over sine alpha. This is h bar over sine alpha. And our h bar is, unfortunately we did not calculate earlier, so this is h bar. Alright, so 10 plus 0 0.4 sine 45 over sine 45. So our y bar will be 0 0.4 sine 45 plus 10 divided by sine 45. And that is 14.54, 14.54 meter. So that is your Y bar. Now let's take a look at our figure again. So Y bar is here. So this is actually 14.54 meter. And from the looks of this figure, from the scale and everything, it looks to be correct. So that is 14.5 meter. Now let's find what is I. That's the only thing that we need to find now. So we know the area is 800 millimeter times 800 millimeter. So with this kind of problem, I think you are in luck because you have no confusion, which is B and which is H. Because I, for a rectangular shape, I is equal to B H cube over 12, right? So now, because our plate is 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 meter, so B is 0 0.8 and H is also 0 0.8. So this is 0 0.8 to the power of 4 divided by 12. Okay, so your YP will be 14.54 plus I, let's calculate I. So this is 0 0.8 to the power of 4, 0.8 to the power of 4 divided by 12. That is 0 0.03413. So 0 0.03413 divided by y bar is 14.54 times area is 0 0.8 square. Okay, we are getting close. Divide. So this is divide 14.54 times 0 0.8 square. Divide by 12. Plus 14.54. And in the end, the answer is 14.544 meter. And really, if you look at this, the Y bar is 14.54. And the YP is 14.544. So the difference in Y bar and YP is very little and in this case is only four millimeter okay but when you are dealing with this amount of force okay 64 kilo newton of force that five or four millimeter could make a difference whether or not the submarine will sink or not so this is why you have to be very careful when using this equation 
I know that you may learn for your exam, but when you graduated later in the industry, this calculation is very important. Now, unfortunately, we are not done yet because what we are really looking for is actually this force, which is P. Okay, we are looking for P and this is how we are going to find it, right? So, I'm just going to do a quick summation of moment, right, at point O here. Okay, so uh, summation of moment at point O, let's take clockwise as positive. So, this will be minus P times L, L is 0 0.8 plus F times, okay, uh, you need to be careful here. I think I label it wrongly because this is not YP, isn't it? Okay, this is actually, if we call this YS, right? So, YS is actually YP minus this distance, right? Okay, and that distance is basically 10 meter, 10 divided by sine 45. All right, so YS is actually YP minus 10 divided by sine 45. And you really need to be careful here because if you use YP, then you're going to be wrong. Okay, so you need to use ys. So this is f times ys. So let's copy this equation here. And solve it down here. Okay. And again, ys is equal to yp minus 10 divided by sine 45. So this is 14.544 minus, this is sine 45, answer 10 divided by sine 45. Okay, so ys is 14.544 minus 14.142, 0 0.402 meter. Okay, so P is equal to F times ys divided by 0 0.8. And this is F is equal to 64,560, 560 divided by 0 0.8 times 0 0.402, which is equal to 64560 times 0.402 divided by 0 0.8. This is 32,441 Newton or simply 32.44 kilonewton. And that is the answer that you are looking for. So, let's say that you are inside this submarine and you want to open this hatch. You are going to need to apply about 32 kilonewton of force in order to open that hatch. And that's it about our example on the force on the plane surface. I hope now that you can see a few things. First, we were looking for the force magnitude. Okay, and to get the magnitude, we use this equation. Force is equal to pressure at the centroid times area. But we know that the location is not at the centroid, but the location is a little bit lower than the centroid, which is called the center of pressure. And to find the center of pressure, we use this equation. Okay. And I is equal to BH cubed over 12. So H is actually the edge that the force cuts into, right? So this is your edge. Okay, this distance is your edge, right? And the other edge is your B, right? But because in this problem, H and B is 0 0.8, so it does not matter. And then once we find the location, which is YP, we need to do the summation of moment because what we are really looking for is the force P here, right? And when we did the summation of moment and then we find what is P and P turn out to be about 32 kilonewton. So that's basically all for this video. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at how to find the force if the plane is curved. Now it may sound complicated, but it is much easier than finding the force on an inclined surface. So thank you very much. Just do this example again and again until you understand how to solve it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.